Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the SAC Joaquin section Division II girls championship game between the St. Mary's Rams and the McNair Eagles. Hello again, everybody. Paul Sheep joined by Joey Gonzalez. And Joey, two teams from the Tri-City Athletic League going at it for the section title. Yeah, absolutely. As you said there earlier, uh, Paul, we were talking, discussing about this team. Very familiar with each other. Uh, you know, league rivals. McNair, you know, St. Mary's is a very tough hill to climb, um, but McNair really coming in here wanting to do something and wanting to show how uh, how well they can improve just with their experience. And for St. Mary's, they played these McNair Eagles twice already. They won 82 to 45 at St. Mary's on January 17th, and then on February 7th in the rematch, McNair lost 87-45 at home. But for the McNair Eagles, the goal in those games was to avoid the running clock. Now as we get to the section title, obviously the goal a little bit higher, Joey. Yeah, as, as you were saying there, uh, Paul, you know, one of the, if the, the things that was famous there with McNair was they were the one of the few teams that uh, did not allow St. Mary's to, to do the running clock. But uh, so obviously St. Mary's here with the experience, knows what they need to do. Um, they tend to want to have loftier goals, always looking for the state, state title. It's going to be... 32 minutes of pressure, full court pressure there from, from St. Mary's. Um, St. Mary's not unfamiliar with this with this position. Yeah, St. Mary's seeking its 13th section title, seeking its fourth consecutive uh, section title. They've been state and league titles uh, since 1994, 27 consecutive playoff wins for St. Mary's. So the Rams are familiar in this position for the McNair Eagles. This is their first time being there under new head coach Anthony Matthews. And Matthews built this program, having previously served as Tom Gonsalves' JV coach at St. Mary's. Yeah, and you were saying that, uh, you know, he tries to emulate, it usually when, as we were discussing, trying to emulate what St. Mary's likes to do when they're playing other opponents. But as you mentioned before, uh, it's just too many, not, he does not have the athlete, athletes, he does not have the guns to go up against uh, St. Mary's athleticism, but uh, want to go ahead and as they're introducing uh, the lineups here, want to give you the, the lineups here quickly here for St. Mary's. Um, starting at uh, guard for St. Mary's will be number four, Regina Camera. She is still playing with, as we were talking before earlier, uh, it was going to be a game time decision because she does have that broken toe, but uh, down there speaking with them, with St. Mary's, they decided to go ahead and, and they had a better shot with uh, going having Regina go ahead and start the ball game. But Regina Camera starting at point guard, the senior. Uh, number uh, at the other guard is going to be number 10, o Onome Jimmer Rigby, uh, junior as well as number 23, Courtney Range, the point guard, uh, junior point guard, and number 32, Unique Coleman, uh, junior, and number 44, Sharice Holloway, a sophomore forward. For McNair, the Eagles out of Stockton as well, it's going to be number five, Bekema Mobley, Bekema Mobley, number 11, Jasmine, I'm sorry, number three, Mandy Coleman, number 10, Brittany Butler, number 20, Cam Cower. Number 22, Kiara Williams, and number 24, Jasmine Sales. So, should be a good one here on PlayOnSports.com. Looking forward to bringing you the section title game here on PlayOnSports.com. Just waiting for the introduction of the starting lineups to conclude. St. Mary's comes into this game 29-3. Ranked currently number 23 in the United States today. USA Today poll, number 19 in Max Preps nationwide. And Max Preps also ranks them number six in the state of California. And the important ranking, number one in the CIF SAC Joaquin section, Division II, against the McNair Eagles, their Tri-City Athletic League rivals. And we're going to get ready for the opening tip. McNair, as you can see, clad in their black uniforms for the road. Rams in their home white uniforms here at Power Balance Pavilion. And it will be Courtney Range going up against Mandy Coleman. Range definitely the inside force for the Rams. They're starting power forward. And the tip is up, controlled by the Rams. Gemma Rigby on the perimeter to get things started. Rams love to spread it out. Gemma Rigby trying to create with the dribble. 
over to camera, into the corner. And Range sends it back out to Jim Rigby. Ram showing unusual patience in the opening possession. Range drives the lane. Shot no good. Battle for the rebound controlled by the Eagles. As you said already, the pressure. They pressure at every given moment. Yeah, it does not take like a conventional press a, uh, a miss or a make shot, rather. Rams going for the steal and coming up with it, and we've got a foul. Going to be a reach foul, I believe, on Sharice Holloway. Yeah, you said it, Paul. I mean, as you said, it, it doesn't matter if it's a miss, if it's a turnover, if it's a make. They're going to press at every every possession. And it doesn't matter if it's it's full court, three-quarter court, half court. They're going to look to force, first, force turnovers and try to get those fast break opportunities. For Sharice Holloway, first personal, first team foul. Eagles looking to inbound. Again, the pressure. Range tips the ball out of bounds, but it'll be eagle ball still. They're just constantly trying to tip that basketball and make something happen, Joey. Yeah, it's, and that's what always works well there for St. Mary's, just get those active hands, uh, get those hands in the passing lanes and get bodies in the passing lanes to deflect some passes. So McNair having to go to the back court in order to inbound the ball. And it's stolen by Holloway in the open floor. Holloway two on two break. Pass too tall for Gemma Rigby, Ram turnover. 7-11 left to go, first quarter, no score yet. Somewhat unusual here for St. Mary's there that uh, they're not in the on the board here within the first minute. Eagles, Mandy Coleman dribbling up for it. Down low, they beat the press and reverse layup. And that's the way you're going to have to beat St. Mary's is figure out a way to beat that press, get it up the floor, uh, and, and try to just... Uh, take advantage of those fast break opportunities. Yara Williams with the bucket, rams out on the perimeter. Camera, pass to Coleman, Coleman for three, eyes it, tries it, nut doesn't buy it. McNair sending up that 2-3 zone. Rams get the tip and no, getting it across, Coleman now a three on one break, pass down low and the Eagles get the layup. They're setting four bodies at the uh, ball handler. Cower. Down low to Holloway. Holloway has her shot blocked from behind, but she'll be shooting two. As I was saying on that press earlier there, Paul, they're sending for St. Mary's sending four bodies at the ball handler. And if you can, that ball handler can just get up the floor, look up the floor, you're going to find some open bodies. It's just being able to get through those passing lanes. Holloway, sophomore transfer, makes the first one. Four to one, McNair with the lead, 625 left to go. Opening quarter here from Power Balance Pavilion. Section title at stake today. Second free throw, no good. Battle for the board. And I believe ball goes off of Courtney Range, the official calls, and it will be McNair basketball. Again, the Rams with the pressure. Camera getting a finger on that ball, but not getting the steal. Battle for the basketball. Range gets her hands on it, but McNair manages to maintain. And now again, Cower on the cherry pick. And this time pulling it back out. Steal by Holloway in the open floor. Really got to take advantage of those opportunities, those open opportunities if you're McNair. Range to Jim Rigby. She thought about it. Rams will fire up a three anytime, anywhere. McNair just setting in, dropping back in a 2-3 zone. In the high post to Range. Range has it stripped. Battle for the basketball down low. And we've got a McNair timeout. 30 seconds timeout. And interesting use of the timeout there by Coach Anthony Matthews. Uh, forward to one, 540 left to go, and gives us a chance for Joey to remind you. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section, and you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game And right now on CIF section, uh, CIF, CIF TV. Click on Buy DVD, and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime, brought to you by CIF TV. So a surprise in the early going, Joey McNair with the early lead, 4-1. to one. Yeah, and you said it, if, and what it has been, been, you know, you know, I don't want to call it basket, basket hanging, but McNair has done an excellent job of breaking the press and able to find the open player down, down the floor. And the Eagles again facing full court pressure, dribbling through it. Get the ball to Cower. Cower gets it out on the wing and going for the layup. No good. 
Battle for the rebound, controlled by Butler, and Butler with the putback. 6-1, McNair Eagles. Interesting, interesting first quarter here for McNair there, Paul. Camera for three. No good off the front of the iron. Rebound by Range. Range trying to make something happen in the paint. Hook shot, put back, no good. Ball goes off of Holloway, and it'll be McNair basketball. Right now, McNair's got the big early lead, a five-point lead, but one thing that uh, Coach Gonzalez is uh, – press does is really use its athleticism and as you said earlier substitutes like heck and forces McNair forces the opponents into some silly turnovers and wears the opponent down and one just happened there Brittany Butler with a push foul first personal first team foul so McNair gives up the basketball to the Rams camera top of the key thought about it dishes instead to Gemma Rigby unique Coleman for three in and out heartbreak Rebound for Holloway. Holloway with the putback, no good. And maintained by Coleman. And the Eagles are going to try and get off and running, but that St. Mary's press slows them down. Dribbling through the pressure, knocked from behind, and Holloway can't save it. Eagles will maintain possession. you got to keep moving that momentum forward. I know they're trying to find outlets behind them, but uh, one of the things that the ball handler isn't doing is looking up the floor. That's the one thing you got to do as a ball handler is make sure you get that ball. Always be looking up the floor. Bree Moore and Lauren Fisher into the game for St. Mary's. The Rams will substitute plenty. Ball into the paint, and Range comes up with the steal for the Rams. That was a force down low into Mandy Coleman. Mandy Coleman never had a chance at it. Camera gets it into Range in the paint. Range with the little jump hook, no good. Rebound by Coleman. Coleman off and running. Almost a back court Almost. violation. Holloway, no, excuse me, Moore with the steal. Two on two break, down low to range, range with the layup, assist Bree Moore. And this is what the St. Mary's wants to do, is just force those turnovers into easy baskets, and usually what works out for them. Down low to Cower, Cower pass out on the break, and Jasmine sails with the bucket off the glass. Great, great press break there. Good job by Cower to look, watch for the uh, sails coming down the floor. Moore out on the wing. Thought about it was Gemma Rigby. Now Moore for three. Bank no good. Battle for the rebound. Coming up with it is Fisher for the Rams. Fisher resets the offense to Gemma Rigby. Into range. Range can't find the handle on that basketball. St. Mary's turnover. McNair leads 8-3. 3.33 left to go. First period. Yeah, it's going to be a backcourt violation. And that's going to be a backcourt violation. They Sales pass for Butler, too tall. They have the bodies up. It was McNair had the advantage up on the front court as they had three on. They had an opportunity for a three on one break there, Paul. But St. Mary's, I mean, I'm sorry, St. Mary's really forcing uh, McNair into again some silly turnovers. But uh, I gotta com com commend here Regina Cameron playing on that broken toe. She's really flying all over the place, knocking some balls around to her teammates. Camera. Sends it into the high post to Holloway. Holloway with the dribble drive, and Holloway doesn't make the shot, but she draws the foul. Yeah, good job there by Holloway to force the uh, force the contact. Camera already signed her letter of intent to the Academy of Art, a Division II school located in San Francisco, and after she did that, uh, there were several D1 schools that came after her, uh, but she decided to keep her commitment. First basket, or first free throw good by Holloway. McNair eight, St. Mary's four, 312 left to go. Yeah, it's really interesting when you have that opportunity. It's, you know, again, really shows uh, the, the type of person that uh, Regina Camera is to go ahead and maintain that commitment. Both free throws good. Rams cut it to three. They come out in full court pressure. They love to trap that basketball. Getting through it is McNair and coming out of control was number 22, Kiara Williams, but I believe there's gonna be a foul on the Rams prior to that. Yeah, Kiara Williams really not sure what she was doing there with the ball, it didn't look like to me. Bree Moore called for the personal, first personal, second team foul on the Rams. And McNair can't hold the handle on the basketball down in the paint. Yeah, just a poor inbound pass there as they were trying to force it in there to, um, that was uh, Asiana Scott hit the back of the backboard. 
Fisher into the corner for Lexi Campbell. Campbell sets up for three, just off the front of the iron. No good. Rebound taken by Butler. And Butler pressured in the backcourt. Ball over the top intended for Destiny Jenkins, and she can't maintain. And it's a turnover. Turnover, turnover. The Rams the other night in their semifinal game forced 49 turnovers against a badly outmatched Florin team. Campbell into the corner, sends it back out to Moore. Resetting the offense. Range on the wing to Campbell. Good job. Back out to Moore. Range will shoot that and does. No good off the back of the iron. Rebound taken by Unique Coleman. Coleman goes up strong. Doesn't get the bucket but draws the foul. And one thing St. Mary's is doing, and they're really sending that extra person in there flying at the ball to knock that ball around. Not so much, it's not so much that, that uh, getting that rebound first, but tipping it to an open teammate or tipping it out. And St. Mary's really collapses around that ball, so they're always going to have those opportunities at uh, second chance points. Unique Coleman makes the first one. Bree Moore going to take a seat. A no made Jim Rigby coming back into the game. Second free throw, also good. Eight to seven, McNair with the lead, but it was eight one at one time. Steal by range after the tip. Into the corner for Coleman. Campbell now sending it back to range. Ram showing patience. Coleman into the paint to Holloway. Back out to Jim Rigby. Jim Rigby's three, no good. Rebound by the Eagles, and it's a travel. Good job there by St. Mary's and trapping down there on the corner. Forcing Mandy Coleman to, uh, into a turnover there. Returning for the Eagles, number 22, Kiara Williams. Kiara Williams back into the game. And Reggie Camera back into the game. Jen Rigby gets it into the paint for range, no good. Rebound by Holloway, she gets away with a travel. And it's taken by Cower. And now McNair off and running. Into the corner on the wing, driving the paint, block shot by Coleman. Coming up with the rebound, Gemma Rigby, down low to range. Basket by Courtney Range, assist on Ome Gemma Rigby. That's a way to run a fast break, a two-on-two -two break. Make sure, suck in that defense and then dump it off to, that, to the trailer. And Holloway called for the reach on the press, and that'll be her. Her second personal, third team foul on the Rams. So a little cause for concern. Holloway, the starting center for the Rams, picking up two. That'll mean the Rams will go small here. Inbound, stolen by camera. Off to Jim Rigby on the wing. Coleman penetrates, kicks it out to camera. Camera for three, no good off the back of the iron. Rebound taken by the Rams. Off to camera, camera again for three. No good again off the back of the iron. Range with yet an off offensive rebound. And again to camera for three. And again, no good. And again a Ram rebound. This time by Moore. Into the corner for Coleman. Coleman for three. Gets it. Unique <laughs> Coleman with the three-pointer. Fourth time's a charm right there, Paul. Absolutely. <laughs> Rams keeping it alive. Now the press by St. Mary's. McNair beating it, and now stolen by the trailer. Bree Moore, lob pass down low to Range. Range reverse layup, no good, but she was fouled. On oh, that last offensive possession there, you gotta, I got to give a lot of credit there for Range. I mean, she was getting, McNair was collapsing down, and they had about four, four you saw about three or four black shirts down there, but Range able to come up with the rebound each and every time. If it wasn't that, it was a long rebounds off the threes. Uh, and, you know, if you're McNair, you need to understand that long shots are going to create long rebounds. So make sure you put a body on a player and, and get after that. Range misses the first free throw. 25.6 seconds left to go first quarter. St. Mary's 12, McNair 8. 
Rams had trailed in this game 8-1 to one at one time. Second free throw. It's good. 13-8. Rams with the lead. And again, what else? Full court pressure. Eagles look to be creating. Get it down low to Jenkins, and Jenkins travels. You know, I'm surprised that not a lot of... You know, there's not a lot more teams that uh, expose these matchups here. They send four players to the ball here, Paul, and you always got four players. These The players, unfortunately, you know, when, you know for St. Mary's, they're sending four players down to the ball. The opposition does not have the opportunity to look through the lanes. Um, excellent job here by Coach Gonzalez's his team. Now Jesse Viss into the game. Kick it out to camera. Camera for three. No good off the back of the iron. And I have to wonder, Joey, whether or not uh, Reggie Camera's broken toe is affecting her shooting touch because Camera on the year, 35% from the line, and yet I believe that's 0 for 5 in the first quarter from the three-point arc for Reggie. Yeah, not able to knock anything down um, from long range. So your score at the end of one quarter, St. Mary's 13, McNair 8. You are listening or watching both on playonsports.com. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIF King section TV. I'm sorry, CIF King TV. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. And, Paul, i got to say, I, I do got to say I'm a little surprised here by the score here after, for, after the first quarter. Inbound stolen by Courtney Range. Second quarter underway. Rams resetting their attack. Get it on the perimeter into the paint to, rent to Coleman. Coleman sends it out to Jem Rigby for three. No good. Jenkins with the rebound for the Eagles. And now the Rams harassing the basketball, as always. Now Jenkins open down low, but instead Kiara Williams drives the lane, and I believe she drew the foul. Yeah, Williams will go to the line, and, you know, it's probably almost a better better decision there by Williams to force uh, Ram, the Rams to uh, foul her on that possession. Force the defender backing down to, to make a decision. First free throw up. No good. Rams with four team fouls. Eagles with five. Second free throw. No good off the back of the iron. Rebound by Courtney Range. Camera sends it over to Gemma Rigby. Rams looking to create with some motion here. Camera into the high post to Range. Range free throw J. No good. Rebound by Coleman. Pressure by the Rams. Stolen by Camera. Down low to Range. Steal by camera, assist by camera, layup by range. One thing you don't want to do as a ball handler is stop with the ball right underneath your opponent's basket there, Paul. So the Rams on a 14-0 run. They had trailed 8-1. They lead 15-8. You know, camera seems to be moving well. But uh, you're right there, Paul. I wonder if it's going to have uh, that toes giving her an... Uh, and a deflection and a steal. Coleman with the steal, into the corner for Lexi Campbell. Back out to Reggie, to Campbell. Campbell for three, eyes it, tries it, and buys it. 18-8, Rams on a 17-0 run. Good job there by Campbell, squaring her shoulders and getting that shot off. Coleman penetrates the lane, her layup no good. Rebound by Coleman. Down low to range, too tall, turnover for the Rams. Yeah, McNair not able to do anything here on these turnovers by St. Mary's. 
And I got to believe, I think it was at about the five minute mark, McNair last scored. So I think they've been shut out for about the last five minutes of this game. Inbound for McNair, Butler, and going for the steal and picking up the foul will be Onome Jemarigby. Or check that, Bree Moore. We're high atop Power Balance Pavilion. <laughs> And Moore picks up the foul. Inbound to the Eagles and the Rams. Campbell with the pressure. McNair this time defeating the press. Sales gets it down low to Cower and Cower with the bucket. And as you said there, Paul, it's their first points within at least six minutes, I believe. Now the Rams on offense. Coleman for three. No good off the back of the iron. Rebound by Mandy Coleman. And now the Eagles off and running. Butler trying to create. Rams going for the steal. And they get the tie up. And it'll be Ram ball on the possession arrow. Cherise Holloway just stepped in there and tied up because there was backside pressure from Lauren Fisher. Yeah, they're doing an excellent job. I mean, always trapping, always looking to force turnovers. St. Mary's is. And in that situation, once they get into the half court, it's really difficult for, for the Rams to, uh, I'm sorry, not the Rams, but, but the Eagles to, to run their half court sets. And Reggie Camera back into the game as Lauren Fisher will take a seat. 18-10, 5.45 left to go first half. Rams up by eight. Gemma Rigby at the point, gets it to Campbell on the wing. Into the post to range. Back out to camera. Camera for three. No good. Rebound by range. And I think they're going to call range for throwing an elbow down low on the rebound. Yeah, offensive foul offensive going foul against St. Mary's. Yeah, and you're a little more familiar with St. Mary's than I am, Paul, but uh, camera not getting any lift when she sets up for those threes. Always tougher, too, making the adjustment to these big city arenas. Ball down low. Cower travels in the paint. St. Mary's pressure always forcing those turnovers. They're forcing, they're going to force the opposition to play their way. And it's the St. Mary's way. Rams with the basketball up by eight. Into the paint to range. Campbell thought about the three. Now Campbell does fire the three, and it's an air ball. Rebound by Mandy Coleman. And Coleman gets fouled in the backcourt. And I believe Coleman will go to the line shooting the bonus. And one of the reasons why Coach Gonzalez is able to play this way, I mean, he's got a deep, deep bench. Always bringing out athletes to trap, and so you can really wear another team down, and he's got fouls to work with as well. Bree Moore and Unique Coleman back into the game for St. Mary's. Shooting the bonus, Mandy Coleman. And Mandy Coleman at the line. She's a 59% free throw shooter. Free throw no good. Rebound by Coleman for the Rams. Gemma Rigby. Two more. Moore penetrates. Moore throws up the shot in traffic. Doesn't get it to go. Rebound put back by Holloway. No good. And the Eagles control. And then a steal by Gemma Rigby, those quick hands. Kicks it out to Moore, Moore for three. Bree Moore. 21-10, steal by Moore to Gemma Rigby on the wing. Gemma Rigby back to Moore, cross court to Coleman. Holloway in the post, Holloway dribble drive penetration and ball is deflected off of Holloway's knee. Nice defensive play there by Mandy Coleman. Opportunity, opportunity here for McNair to do something off of that, uh, off of these turnovers. But, uh, you know, it's already 21 to 10 and, and things just getting away here from McNair. 4.24 left to go first half. Rams lead by 11. Pressure again by St. Mary's. Full court pressure and a timeout called by McNair. 4.24 left to go first half. St. Mary's 21, McNair 10. 
You are watching the CIF Sac Joaquin section Division II championship game on Play On Sports. KBCSports.com will be providing live audio coverage of the state regional basketball championships as well as the finals. March Madness comes to high school basketball in California on March 17th for the regional basketball championships. Four venues of coverage around the state. Then, the following weekend, March 23rd and 24th, is the California State Basketball Championships. You can catch it all on kbcsports.com, your home for high school sports. And the Rams lead 21-10 with 4.24 left to go in the first half. St. Mary's with the trademark pressure defense. Coleman looking to inbound. Rams trap in the backcourt. And Bree Moore nearly makes the steal, but Coleman will inbound again. Rams with that pressure. Always trying to make something happen. Coleman with a nice pass over the top. Three on two break. Down low to Jenkins, and Jenkins can't control. And a turnover by Aliyah Monroe. Pass was late getting there, and you wonder whether or not Monroe just had a better opportunity just to take the 15-foot jumper from where she was at. Because uh, those Ram players really got up the floor quickly. Bree Moore at the point now, looking to create. Out on the wing to camera, into the post to range. Top of the key, three. Eyes it, tries it, and buys it. Bree Moore. Fisher tips the basketball, makes a great save into range. Camera sends it to Moore, who's got the hot hand right now. Pass into the corner for Coleman, deflected out of bounds by Jasmine Sales. Rams will maintain possession. And you said it there, Paul. I mean, they're just setting up for the three. St. Mary's doing an excellent job from beyond the arc so far. You know, perhaps the only one really struggling is uh, Camera. Range gets it into Coleman. Moore sets up Camera into Courtney in the paint. Courtney jump hook no good. Rebound by Coleman for the Eagles. McNair over the top. They've got a three on three break. And Rams trap the basketball. Ball down low intended for Cam Cower. And she can't control it. And it's yet another McNair turnover. At halftime, that's always the stat with St. Mary's that you have to look at, Joey. How many turnovers did the Rams force? Yeah, and I mean, that's it. It's always going to be the turnover battle there for, for St. Mary's. That's how they get their big points. That's how they're able to get their easy buckets, and that's when they're always running down opponents. Out to Fisher for three. No good. Battle for the rebound. Tipped, controlled by the Eagles. Butler with a nice behind-the-back dribble, then gets trapped. Butler manages to get it to Williams. Butler cross-court cross -court pass. Down low and into the paint. And Destiny Jenkins gets fouled in the paint. You know, St. Mary's really sets up and, and, and plays these half-court sets real well, always trapping. And they always bring extra defenders on one half of the floor to clog up those passing lanes. Always moving their hands, and so that's what really makes things difficult here to, for McNair to work with. First free throw, no good. And I believe it's a change where the program was wrong in the book. Is Asiana Scott is the name for number 32. I apologize. It was listed on their roster in the program and on Max Preps as Destiny Jenkins. So that's Asiana Scott, who is number 32. Second free throw, no good. Rebound taken by Range. Rams up by 14, 2.45 left to go first half. St. Mary's looking to create. Jesse Viss into Coleman in the paint. Coleman sends it back out to Campbell. Campbell for three, no good off the back of the iron. Rebound by Mandy Coleman. Eagles off and running, taking it to the paint. And they're going to call the charge. That's that one of those borderline calls, Joey. Yeah. Can go block and go charge. It, it, it's always difficult. It always depends on how the, the angle usually what the official is at. But, you know, one thing that I'm noticing here, Rams are all over the place. They Not only do they collapse there for the rebound, they send about four players down to get the rebound, but they're also able to move down the floor. So, you, you know, it would be fun to watch a, uh, a, 
uh, St. Mary's practice and see how much they work on conditioning. Oh, they run like you would not believe. <laughs> Down low to Coleman. Coleman has her shot blocked. Coming up with it are the Eagles. They're off and running. And traveling, traveling the call. Borderline call there, too. Could have been a travel. Could have been a foul on Gemma Rigby with the reach, but the Rams get the break. And 24-10, 2.06 left to go. First half here from Power Balance Pavilion. Section 2 title game. Into Coleman. Back out to Campbell. Jem Rigby penetrating. Jem Rigby floater in the lane. Gets it to go. 26-10. Rams up by 16. The wide open lane there for Jem Rigby. No pressure. An easy lay in for her. Ball down low to Scott. Scott makes the banker in the paint. 26-12. McNair just not, has not had the opportunities there on their side of the floor. Looking to create. Rams. Campbell on the wing. Back to Jim Rigby. Jesse Viss for three. Jesse Viss in and out. Heartbreak rebound though. Campbell. Back to Jim Rigby. Over to Viss again for three. And Jesse Viss with an air ball this time. Rebound taken by McNair. But McNair pressured in the backcourt. 108 left to go, first half. Coleman on the wing. Sends it back out. Long distance, three-pointer. Wow. And making it from downtown, Jasmine Sales. Great look there by Sales, and McNair kind of almost has to do that kind of sort of thing where they're just going to have to take the first opportunity they see. An NBA three for Jasmine Sales. Back out to Viss. Viss into the paint to Coleman. Down low to Holloway. And Holloway misses the shot in the paint, but she draws the foul. Yes, St. Mary's just relentless pressure applied, but a rare three there, a rare long-range shot there for McNair. Asiana Scott, second personal, seventh team foul. Rams will be in the bonus for the remaining 40 seconds of the half. Holloway misses the first free throw. Rams up by 11. Calling a experience, calling a numerous of these St. Mary's section title games here, Paul. This is, I got to say, this is one of the closest games I've seen here for St. Mary's. McNair beats the press, going out on the wing. And again, it's the borderline block charge call, and the official being consistent, calling Jasmine Sales with the charge. Yeah, I think in that situation, what happened, Sales looked to be a little bit out of control. The defender already had her position. Second personal, eighth team foul. Rams up 26-15. And Jesse Viss and Lexi Campbell back out onto the floor. Viss and Campbell both love to shoot that three. Camera to Viss on the wing. Jesse cross court pass to Lexi. Over to Viss. Viss. Into the high post to Holloway. Out to Campbell for three. Lexi Campbell with three. Very good defensive possession there for McNair, but a better shot there by Campbell. And a turnover made by Kiara Williams. And the Rams with three and a half seconds left to go. Chance to pad this lead. Viss gets it into camera. Struggle for the basketball. And now .8 seconds left to go. St. Mary's going to have to catch and shoot. 29-15. Into the corner for Campbell. Campbell can't get off the shot. And it's halftime. Your score at the half, St. Mary's 29, McNair 15. Quick thoughts on this first half of basketball, Joey. Well, as I was saying, this is one of the closest games I've seen St. Mary's play in a long time. McNair has had their opportunities on the fast break and breaking that press, but just have not been able to capitalize St. Mary's play in the game. Relentless pressure, drawing and kicking, making sure they're passing the ball around the perimeter, looking for those open threes, and they've been knocking them down. Yeah, having seen St. Mary's numerous times this year, I'd have to say one of the best halves of defense St. Mary's has played 
but in all honesty, one of the worst halves of offense St. Mary's has played, 29-15, but don't know how much credit you give to the McNair defense or just St. Mary's being a little bit off on its game. But regardless, we've got a basketball game, something a lot of people didn't think we'd have in this section final, and we'll be back with the second half here on PlayOnSports.com. 3.16 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run us to the 5 10. Touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two, get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter steps under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40-yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20-yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64-yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal five line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep. 
And then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game, 21 to 20, with 25 seconds to play. The senior McMorrow with a huge kick, not the longest of his career, but the biggest of his career. Oh, St. Augustine leads it, 21 to. Already 20. lining up, they won't even have to run that one more play. They just acquiesce. Yeah, why bother? So there you have it. Your five-time defending Division III champions, the Cathedral Catholic Dons, running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh, my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh, boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve. Championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's gonna bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity, look for Wallace, no, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace, for the match! <laughs> Kathleen Wallace, no better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation taken. Neil, the clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that hey we didn't get shut out so 44 to 6 is your score and helix is celebrating on the sideline oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended two minutes and five seconds left on the clock clock rolling third down and 15 for the patriots dylan he's got time steps up He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field. And, and we're back from halftime and some quick stats that we want to share with you from this game, uh, Joey? Yeah, as you said, here has been a turnover battle. St. Mary's has forced McNair into 27 turnovers. Conversely, St. Mary's only with seven themselves. Uh, what I really like, was really impressed, was with the shooting there. St. Mary, St. McNair only seven of 10, with St. Mary's nine of 39, but 25 of those uh, 39 attempts are threes. Yeah, Making five of those. Yeah, five out of 25 from the arc for the Rams. But for McNair, when you only get off 10 shots and a half, that's phenomenal defense for St. Mary's. 
Yeah, yeah, they've been all over the place here. St. Mary's, great, great first half, and expect for more of it uh, from them here in the second. And McNair manages to throw the ball off of St. Mary's, so the Eagles will maintain possession. St. Mary's up by 14. These two teams met earlier. They're TCAL rivals. St. Mary's won 82 to 45 at St. Mary's. And then in the rematch, the Rams won 87 45. Ball deflected by Holloway, stolen by Range. Coleman, down low to Holloway, and Holloway misses the layup. Rams with pressure. Coleman gets it to Cower on the wing. Cower cross court pass to Butler, and Butler. Gets plowed into by <laughs> Courtney Range. Really got Courtney Range off her feet there. And Butler, you know, not exactly sure of three, three point numbers here, but she was wide open. I don't know why Butler did not decide to pull the trigger on that one. I think she was just afraid that Courtney <laughs> Range at 6 1 was flying at her. So McNair will inbound the ball underneath their bucket. Pressure by the Rams. Tip by camera. And can't come up with it. St. Mary's forcing, as we said, 27 turnovers in the first half. But the Rams only 9 for 39 from the field. Down low to Coleman. Kick out to Sales. Into Coleman in the block. And Coleman goes up strong and draws the foul. Good footwork there by Coleman inside, trying to find something, forcing camera to foul her. You know, I mean, that's what, what McNair is going to have to try to do is slow the tempo. I mean, it's very it's very difficult off of a team that presses you and traps you at every given moment. But if, they can, if they're going to get success, they're going to have to find a way to slow this game down. And here's a huge part of this game, folks. Mandy Coleman, averaging 17 points a game, misses her first free throw. She has been shut out tonight. Second free throw, no good also. And so she will remain shut out, and the Eagles will trail by 14. And a rather careless pass by Courtney Range. And a turnover by the Rams. A rare on first force turnover there by the Rams. And McNair is going to have to learn how to capitalize on these moments because they are few and far between. And Coach Gonsalva showing his displeasure. Courtney Range sent out. Lexi Campbell sent in for the Rams. St. Mary's again trapping. Getting it down low to Coleman. And Coleman gets the layup. Good press break there by McNair, able to get Coleman her first two Rams points up, of the game. Rams up by 12, seven minutes to play, third quarter. In the Holloway in the high post, out to camera for three. Reggie Camera, no good. Off the back of the iron, Butler tracks down the rebound, and then Reggie goes for the steal at the other end and can't quite come up with it. McNair will maintain possession. You said it earlier, Paul. You wondered with, uh, whether or not Regina Camera that toe, how much that toe is affecting her. She held scoreless here tonight, even though she's their best three-point shooter. Driving the lane, kick down low, and an easy bucket for Cam Cower. Eagles cut it to 10, 29-19, 6:37 left to go, third quarter. Looking to create. Long distance three, no good by Lexi Campbell. Rebound down low to Unique Coleman, and Coleman misses the shot but draws the foul. This McNair defense is really sagging off those shooters. You wonder what would happen if they try to close out on them, try to give them, apply more pressure, see whether or not they can collapse on the defense when they try to drive the lane. Coleman with the free throw. You know, Joey, my favorite line in all of movie history comes from the movie Rocky when Apollo Creed goes to the corner after the first round and says, you don't know it's a show. He thinks it's a fight. And that's what McNair is doing right now to St. Mary's. They don't know it's a show. McNair thinks it's a fight. And they're hanging in there 30-19. to 19. Anytime you can keep it close in here in the second half for McNair, you got to think, you know, internally it's a victory for them. And the Eagles hanging in there. And we've got a foul away from the basketball. Wait to see the call here. Look like it's going to go against uh, McNair there, Kiara Williams. Kiara Williams with the push. Second personal, second team foul. And Courtney Range back in. Sharice Holloway going to take a seat. Rams up 30-19, to 6.26 left. Much closer than anticipated so far, though. 
Into the paint to range, range, underhand scoop shot, no good. Rebound taken by Bree Moore, kicking it back out. Camera on the wing, Reggie to Bree Moore. Moore penetrates reverse layup, no good, but she draws the foul. Bree Moore with that quickness. You know, but I gotta say, I like what McNair did in that instance as they forced St. Mary's to drive on that, you know, not, did not give the, up the open three. They forced St. Mary's to drive. Well, obviously, it ended up in a foul and an opportunity here at the line, but, uh, you know, good strategy there by McNair. Moore's first free throw, good. 31-19. Moore, seven points on the night. Second free throw, no good. Battle for the rebound. Range, can't quite come up with it. And McNair will get the basketball, trailing by 12, with 6.07 left to go here in the third quarter. Asiana Scott back into the game for McNair. And Rams with full court pressure, what else? Ball deflected, stolen by Moore. Moore gets it to Fisher, Fisher to camera, and Reggie camera with the layup. Assist from Lauren Fisher. Camera getting on the board for the first time tonight, or this afternoon. And dribbling through the pressure is Mandy Coleman. Coleman pulls up, shot no good from 10. Rebound by Reggie Camera down low. Yeah, you know she'd love to have that Camera one. Camera with a perfect pass to range. Range catches it in stride. Easy layup. Great fast break ball by there by Regina Camera. Able to find Courtney Range. Good ball movement there by St. Mary's. And McNair calls timeout. 5.36 left to go. Third quarter. St. Mary's 35, McNair 19. You're watching the Section 2 Championship game on Play on Sports. KBCSports.com and the Play on Sports Network showcase great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook, get the latest KBC and Play on News on Twitter, or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, kbcsports.com and Play on Sports. Yeah, that new partnership between Play on Sports and KBC Sports. And I think it's going to be a great partnership here and looking forward to uh, more uh, sports action coming in the next few months. Rams with the pressure out of the timeout, up by 16. Eagles this time defeat the press, get it down low to Scott, and Scott can't handle the basketball. Asiana Scott is managing to get behind that St. Mary's defense, Joey, but they just she just can't seem to come up with a handle on the basketball. Yeah, pass was a little too high there for you know, for her to handle, but uh, they say McNair really needs to take advantage of those opportunities. You cannot give away extra point, easy points here to uh, St. Mary's. And Moore tries to throw it into the paint to range. Instead, it's a St. Mary's turnover. Uh, Nomi Gemma Rigby back into the game. And Sharice Holloway back into the game for St. Mary's. 35-19, 5.22 left to go, third quarter here. Pressure by the Rams, and a McNair turnover. Just can't get the ball in. No, just forcing passes, looking for any anything to go here or their way. But St. Mary's doing a great job of, of clogging the lanes and, and handling defenders on their man defense. Jim Rigby with the inbound. Gets it into camera. Back out to Jim Rigby, over to Reggie. Reggie for three. Air ball, no good. Out of bounds, Eagles ball. You know, she looks fine out there. Feet are set. She looks square to the basket, just missing everything. Cannot connect from three here to this afternoon here, Paul. And Unique Coleman going to substitute for Reggie Campbell. Rams again with the full court pressure up by 16. Rams try to trap on the side. Coleman over the top to Williams. And Williams pulls up her dribble. Cross-court pass. Sales. Sales. Throws it down low into the paint for Coleman. And Coleman has it blocked from behind. But Mandy Coleman will go to the line shooting two. Well, that was good on several occasions. Able just to get the ball down low. Able to find openings. But uh, one thing that, that worries me here is sometimes on those situations, it looks like McNair is really forcing passes. They see an open, and they're really 
you know, doing what they can to get it in there to, the, to that player. And Coleman's first free throw, in and out, no good. Coleman, 59% on the year, but I believe 0 for 4 tonight from the line. Second free throw, good. 35-20, St. Mary's ahead by 15, five minutes left to go. Third period. Into the high post to range, back out to Coleman. Coleman for three, no good off the back of the iron. Tipped rebound by range, Coleman comes up with it. Jim Rigby penetrates, kicks it to the trailer, Holloway, and Holloway with the layup, assist from Jim Rigby. Again, offensive rebounds and turnovers here with the trap here for uh, by St. Mary's, but offensive rebounds really giving St. Mary's extra possessions, but McNair has been in a 2-3 zone all, all afternoon long, and what happens in those situations with the long shots, you're going to be out of position for those rebounds. And the Rams force yet another turnover. Sales pass too tall. And Rams will inbound. Up by 17. 4.35 left to go into the high post for Coleman. Back out onto the wing for Campbell. Jim Rigby back to Campbell. Into range. Range penetrates. Range's layup. Easy money. 39-20. Courtney Range with the bucket. Pass down low for Cower, and Cower on the cherry pick is the best offense McNair has. Give her 10 on the night, 39-22. McNair doing a great job of getting behind the press there. Into the high post to Range. Range's pass intended for Jesse Viss. Another turnover. Yeah, again, something you're not very used to seeing is St. Mary's with unforced turnovers. You know that Coach Gonzalez is not happy with those. And the Rams going to substitute here. And Unique Coleman going to take a seat. Reggie Camera back into the game. Bree Moore back into the game for Anome Gemma Rigby. 39 22, 357 left to go, third period. Pass into Sales. Sales throws it over the top. Down low pass intended for Cam Cower. And I think they see Cam Cower with the opening sometimes, and they just try to get it to her, and it's just too tall. They, they're yeah. like a kid in a candy store. They see the opening, and it's just not quite as big as they think it is. As, as, as I was saying, they're so excited there to try to force the ball to her that a lot of these passes are just errant passes. If they would just get it a little closer, nice, softer, easier pass, I'm sure they would get it to her, but they're trying to get it to her so fast. Campbell out on the wing. Gets it to beautiful pass from Camera into Courtney Range. Range, the leading scorer for the Rams with 13. Rams up by 19. That was a beautiful pass, but a beautiful post move there by Range as well there, Paul. And a strip and a steal by Lexi Campbell. Rams up 41-22. This dishes it back out to Camera. Rams setting their attack. Cross-court pass. Into the corner for Campbell. Campbell into the high post for range. Reggie cross court to Campbell. Great ball movement by the Rams. Five seconds on the shot clock. Campbell's pass deflected out of bounds, and now the Rams will have one second to catch and shoot with 2.54 left to go. Really good defensive possession here for McNair so far. Three seconds on the shot clock, 2.54 in the quarter. Camera looking to inbound. Gets it down to range. Range can't control, and it's stolen by McNair. Stolen back at the other end by Bree Moore. Moore down low to range. Range kicks it out to Campbell. Back out to camera. Reggie for three. Off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound by range. Over on the perimeter to, to Viss. Into range in the paint, range, spin move, and a layup. Courtney Range. I really love the post moves there by Courtney Range. Great, great post player. She's got excellent footwork down low. Driving the lane, Williams. Williams gives off to Cower, and Cam Cower with 12 tonight, 43 24. Bree Moore penetrating, loses the handle on the basketball, but I believe it was deflected by McNair. It looks like they're calling a foul there. Eagles foul number 10, Brittany Butler. Didn't see the foul myself, but it's called on Brittany 
Butler. Yeah, I'm with you, Paul. I'm not sure exactly what had happened. Second personal, fourth team foul. I guess on the deflection, she might have slapped the wrist going by. Coleman gets it into range. Range spin move, and range called for the travel. Eagles ball. Yeah, she got caught up there. 43-24, 2.07 left to go, third quarter. Rams with full court pressure. Range with the deflection and the steal and the bucket. Courtney Range, 17 tonight, 45-24. Rams again with pressure on Coleman. Over the top, deflected coming up with it is McNair. They get it down to Cower, and Cower now trapped in the corner, and Cower called for the travel. Again, an easy tur turnovers is what St. Mary's lives off of. Turnovers and fast break opportunities, and, and they're going to trap you at every co corner, every inch of the floor. Asiana Scott back on the floor for McNair. And Reggie Camera on the floor as Lexi Campbell takes a seat. 45 24, 145 left to go in this one from Power Balance Pavilion. Section 2 title at stake. Back out to camera. Jim Rigby top of the key. Again to camera. And Gemma Rigby penetrates the lane, throws up a floater. Doesn't get it to go, but draws the foul. Yeah, Jim Rigby trying to take advantage there of a slow-moving Eagles defense. Foul is called on Asiana Scott, third personal. Fifth team foul. Jim Rigby's free throw no good off the back of the iron. Also at stake for St. Mary's, Joey in all likelihood, Rams win, they will get the top seed in the NorCal playoffs. Yeah, it's what St. Mary's is, is used to here is uh, St. Mary's always looking to, next to the uh, understanding that they're trying to, to play for a state title. McNair beats the press that time. Williams out on the wing. Ball deflected, stolen by Coleman. Coleman harassed, gets, manages to get it to Moore. Moore dribble drive penetration, doesn't get it to go. Rebound taken by Scott for McNair. Eagles off and running inside a minute to play. Ball down low to Scott, deflected, and believe we're going to have a foul on Asiana Scott in the paint, reaching on Reggie Camera. Yeah, and now St. Mary's really pushing this, you know, push this lead out. They just continue to build it on this 21 point lead. And they actually call the foul on sales. So second personal for her. Rams up by 22. Looking to create. Fisher gets it in the high post to Holloway. Jim Rigby penetrates. Into Coleman. Coleman scoop shot off the bank. 48-24. Yeah, good patience there by St. Mary's, waiting for that open opportunity. McNair off and running. Ball intended down low, and I thought the Rams might have deflected it, but instead the pass for Cower too tall. St. Mary's will probably go for the last shot here. 19.8 seconds left to go. They lead 48-24. Third quarter just about to expire. This 2-3 zone really hasn't been able to Stop here, St. Mary's. Camera back out to Jim Rigby. Three seconds. Camera's shot is blocked. And that's the end of the third quarter. Your score here from Power Balance Pavilion. It's the St. Mary's Rams 48, the McNair Eagles 24. You're listening to the Division II section title game on Play On Sports. Need a highlight video for your athlete working to earn that four-year scholarship? then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246.
Catch the best of Sac Joaquin section basketball on CIFSacJoaquin.tv. You can watch a replay of today's games after each one concludes, plus check out game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more. Order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game where you're home for basketball in, in the Sac Joaquin section. CIFSacJoaquin.tv. And Paul Sheet and Joey Gonzalez bringing you this one from the Power Balance Pavilion. Rams lead by 24 as we start the fourth quarter. St. Mary's with the basketball. Adam Jemrigby to Fisher. Fisher for three. No good off the front of the iron. Rebound by Coleman. Eagles try to get it over the top. And pass for Butler again. Too tall. And it'll be St. Mary's ball following another McNair turnover. Into the paint. For range, range to Coleman. Coleman has it stripped by Coleman. Mandy Coleman taking it from Unique Coleman. Mobley coming up with the handle on the basketball and then deflected from behind by Gemma Rigby. And McNair will maintain possession. 48 24. You know, McNair, McNair has really done a lot of things here, done a lot of things well. Unfortunately, it's just that. Uh, the turnover battle here by St. Mary's is really winning, is really the difference here in this ball game. Mandy Coleman with a rebound put back bucket after a McNair air ball. They cut it to 22. Jim Rigby out to Fisher. Anome sends it to Camera. Camera back out to Fisher. Into the high post to range. Back down low to Coleman. Coleman spin move. No good on the shot. Air ball. Rebound taken by Mandy Coleman. And the Eagles have it deflected by range. And St. Mary's, doesn't matter whether it's a make or a miss, pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, and one thing that's impressive about this, uh, about St. Mary's is their active hands. Always have uh, hands moving. And, and that's there's a, there's a saying I've heard, it's hand down, man down. So you keep those hands up, deflect some of those passes, you get those hands up, it's going to make it harder for a shooter to shoot. You get those hands up, it's going to create turnovers. Maria Lauren Ramos seeing her first action tonight for St. Mary's. Mandy Coleman looking, gets it out on the wing. Into the corner now for Williams. Williams being harassed there. And we're going to have a reach foul on St. Mary's, I believe. You know, it's something that Coach Gonzalez obviously is something willing to risk. Is you know the sub tempo style, you know, his trapping style. He's got players. You know, he's got a big, big, long, deep bench to work with, and so uh, a little bit of that uh, extra pressure he does not mind. Foul called on Unique Coleman. Ball down low for Mandy Coleman. She can't make it. Can't make it again on a rebound putback. And finally, Courtney Range comes up with the rebound. Range cross court pass to Ramos. Back out to Bree Moore, again to Lauren Ramos, in the range in the high post. Maria out on the wing, sends it to camera, into the post, to range, and range makes the driving layup and draws the foul. Courtney Good. range. Excellent patience there by St. Mary's there, Paul. Something that, uh, you know, they're, they're very disciplined, and it's kind of hard to, to describe a, a up-tempo team as being disciplined, but you can see it's that defense, and they do have patience when they need it. Courtney Range trying to make the old-fashioned three-point play here. No good off the back of the iron, and I believe Courtney's going to get called for a rebounding foul, trying to get her own shot. 19 on the game for range. St. Mary's is always active, always in pursuit of the ball. You never really see any lazy plays. You never really see anybody ever walking around or kind of just jogging down the floor. It's attack, attack, attack. A very impressive ball game here by St. Mary's. Courtney Range called for her third personal. 15 foul on the Rams. Pressure by the Rams. Gemma Rigby comes up with the steal. Giving it up now to Gemma Rigby. Back out to Moore, cross-court pass to Lauren Ramos. Top of the key, Coleman. Coleman penetrates, gives it down low to Holloway. Holloway with a reverse layup, and she draws the foul. Excellent ball movement there by St. Mary's. 
getting it down to Sharice Holloway and an opportunity here for Holloway from the line. Holloway with her seventh point tonight. And Aaliyah Monroe back into the game for McNair. Holloway averaging 13.7 points on the year. And she makes the old-fashioned three-pointer. Rams up by 27, 53-26. Rams with pressure. Coleman over the top, down low to Scott. Scott with the layup, assist from Mandy Coleman. They just have not had enough of those opportunities Opportunities there for McNair. Lauren Ramos gets the ball down low to Holloway. Holloway makes the layup and draws the foul again. Very impressive move there by Sharice Holloway down low. Able to get some separation and then draw the foul. 55-28. Holloway back-to-back old-fashioned three-pointers. 56-28, and the Rams starting to pull away here. That's what tends to happen with that pressure. Just wears opponents down. It's usually in the second half and then eventually the fourth quarter where it all comes together for St. Mary's. Over the top down low to Monroe. Monroe has it deflected by Unique Coleman. McNair will maintain possession. 5-16 left to go in the game. St. Mary's 56, McNair 28. Paul Sheet and Joey Gonzalez live from Power Balance Pavilion. Ball into the low block, and missing the shot is Scott, but Scott drew the foul. Asiana Scott going to go to the line, shooting two. St. Mary's foul, 44, Sharice Holloway, her fourth. Holloway called for her fourth personal, six-team foul. Just not a lot of opportunities here for McNair. I mean, it's really hard to get across that pressure Get around that pressure there from St. Mary's. Coach Gonzalez always substituting, and, and as I was saying earlier, it just this defense just wears teams down, wears opponents down, and eventually, yeah, you know, St. Mary's will start to pull away, really pull away there in the fourth quarter, as they've done here today. First free throw, no good. Second free throw off the front of the iron. Rebound taken by Bree Moore. Moore sends it out to camera. Then Moore loses the handle on the basketball. Jesse Viss stealing it back for the Rams. Moore into the corner for Viss. Back out to Fisher. Fisher to Moore. It's five seconds on the shot clock. Fisher in the corner. Fisher throws up a shot, and it'll be a 30-second clock violation on St. Mary's. So good, good defense there by, by McNair. But uh, just, you know, a little too late here. Mandy Coleman, baseball pass to Asiana Scott. Scott drives the lane, misses the layup, battle for the rebound, and I believe we're going to have a jump ball called or a timeout. Which is it? Timeout called by the Eagles. 4.34 left to go in this one. St. Mary's 56, McNair 28. You're listening to the Sac Joaquin section, Division II championship, also watching it on Pro Play on sports. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFSACWAUKEEN.TV. Click on Buy DVD and you, you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by Sac CIFSACWAUKEEN.TV. Yeah, Joey, my first time doing a television game, so I'm not <laughs> used to that you're watching. I'm so used to your listening. Going to... This is great. I mean, this is yeah, a this first is a opportunity luxury. to win a uh, live television event, a live uh, broadcast, video, video broadcast. So uh, it's great that we've had this opportunity here at the CIF, at the Sac Joaquin section. So uh, hopefully all our folks are uh, enjoying all the action. Inbound pass down Asiana Scott. Asiana Scott with the easy bucket, 56-31. Or 56-30, I thought so. They gave her three, 56-30. Rams up by 26. Campbell thought about the three. Sends it to Viss in the corner instead. Down low to Fisher. Into Coleman in the paint. Back out to Moore. Moore penetrates. Moore throws an out of control shot. Asiana Scott with the rebound for McNair. And Bree Moore coming up lame. The freshman 
This cause for concern for the Rams as their season advances. Moore manages to kick it to Campbell. Campbell, long distance three, in and out heartbreak. Rebound taken by Sales. Sales, baseball pass. Complete into the front court, and Lauren Fisher going to get called for the reach foul on Bakima Mobley. You know, probably a good foul there by Fisher, though, because uh, Eagles had numbers going their way. And the big concern for the Rams, Bree Moore coming off limping. And that very talented freshman, key to the Rams' plans as they advance in the NorCal playoffs next, starting next week. Free throw good, making the front end of the one-on-one -on -one is Bakima Mobley. 56-31, Mobley a 50% free throw shooter on the year. Second free throw, also good, 56-32, 3.45 left to go. Into the corner for Fisher, Fisher sends it back out to Gemma Rigby. Coleman for three, no good, rebound taken by Range. Over to Fisher for three. Fisher no good off the back of the iron. Rebound by Gemma Rigby. Fisher to Coleman. Gemma Rigby penetrates. Gemma Rigby loses the handle. Range comes up with it. Coleman penetrates, and Coleman gets fouled on her way to the bucket. Yeah, all these last on this position right here. Uh, you can see how the 2-3 zone really gets, gets McNair out of position for those long-range rebounds. And so that's why they St. Mary's have has had the extra opportunities. Foul called on Jasmine Sales, third personal. Shooting the double bonus is Coleman and misses the first one. 3-12 left to go. Kiara Williams back into the game for McNair. Second free throw, good. 57-32, Rams up by 25. 3-10 left to go. Sales manages to get it to Coleman, and Coleman with one pass too many, stolen by Fisher. Down low to Range, and Courtney Range, your leading scorer tonight with 21, Rams up. 59-32. It's just been typical St. Mary's basketball here, Paul. Something you're, Yet you know, another you're very, McNair turnover. You're very familiar with it. The, as you said right there, a uh, turnover there for McNair. Forcing turnovers, taking advantage of fast break opportunities, taking advantage of turnovers, and you know just building an incredible lead here and, and applying pressure their full 32 minutes of the ball game. Gemma Rigby. Looking to create, Rams with the lead. Jesse out on the wing, sends it to Fisher, who gets it into the paint to range. Back out to Campbell. Campbell for three, no good. Long rebound, manages to bounce to Fisher. Fisher down low to range. Assist, Lauren Fisher. Bucket, Courtney Range. St. Mary's just taking advantage of numbers there. 23 for range. Campbell with a steal at the other end after a deflection. Fisher, borderline NBA three-pointer, no good. Courtney Range with the rebound, kicks it out to Jem Rigby. Jem Rigby penetrates, and Jem Rigby gets fouled in the paint. St. Mary's always just forcing, forcing McNair into tough decisions and to have to make in, in quick decisions, decisions that they're not comfortable with. And so uh, it's on full display here with St. Mary's, you know, what they're able to do. Anome Gemma Rigby, free throw good. Anome, the younger sister of a Fourie Gemma Rigby, a McDonald's All-American at St. Mary's who's currently on full scholarship at Cal Berkeley. I remember seeing a 4A1. I was always amazed just uh, her strength and incredible handle with the ball. The other McDonald's All-American from that team, Chelsea Gray, recently nominated for the Point Guard of the Year Award in college basketball, one of the eight finalists. She's the starting point guard at Duke. Rams with pressure. Long distance three-pointer. Big time shot, eyes it, tries it, and buys it 
for sales for McNair. 63-35. One thirty-five left to go in this game. Down low to Holloway. Holloway scoop shot, no good. Rebound by Range. Range back out to Viss. Penetration by Moore. Moore shot deflected in the lane. And Bree Moore gets fouled. She's going to shoot two. 125 left to go. St. Mary's 63, McNair 35. Can't wait to see the final stats on this one in terms of the shooting and the turnover battle. Always interesting. First free throw, good. Yeah, I mean, it's always heavy laden, I mean, for the opposition. St. Mary's, obviously, but uh, another, you know, just waiting for another spot here, another banner to hang up here from the St. Mary's Raptors. This will be the 13th section title for St. Mary's in girls basketball. Shooting for their eighth state title, fourth consecutive. Sales for three, and she gets another one. Jasmine Sales with back-to-back -back NBA three-pointers, 65-38. Into the paint for Range. Range gets up the shot. Courtney Range on fire. 25 tonight. Rams lead 67-38. 59.6 seconds left to go. And a timeout on the floor by St. Mary's. You are watching play on sports coverage of the Sac Joaquin section Division II championship game. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIF Sac Joaquin section. I'm sorry, CIF Sac Joaquin TV. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For your for more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. So St. Mary's lead 67-38 with just under a minute to go here from Power Balance Pavilion. And the Rams finally take the full court press off. Sales sends it into the corner. Reverse layup in. Unbelievable shot by Kiara Williams. 67-40. Katie Smith onto the floor along with Andrea Barameda for the Rams. Along with Ashley Moore, sister of Bree Moore. Ashley Moore with the basketball. Has it stolen. Stolen and then slipping to the floor is Catherine New Yen of McNair, and it'll be a McNair turnover. Yeah, really unfortunate. She had an opportunity there, but uh, slid on the floor, lost her footing, and uh, got the turnover. Barameda with the basketball. Gives it up to Smith. Back to Barameda. Over to Smith. Smith for three. Air ball. Rebound taken by McNair. Giving it up on the wing to Sales. Sales throws up a shot, doesn't get it to go, but draws the foul. Jasmine Sales going to go to the line, shooting two. Yeah, Sales really starting to get hot here late. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't had the opportunities. A couple of big threes here in the fourth quarter, but uh, as we were saying that, you know, the St. Mary's pressure may forcing McNair into a, a lot of mistakes. Jasmine Sales. Makes the free throw, gives her 13 on the night. Make it 14, 67-42. Rams under 10 seconds. Katie Smith with the basketball. Smith loses the handle, coming up with it is McNair, but that's going to be it. Final score here from the Power Balance Pavilion. The St. Mary's Rams win their 13th section title. 67 to 42 over the McNair Eagles. St. Mary's runs their record of 30 and 3 on the year. McNair sees their mark drop to 27 and 4. And Joey for the Rams, a 13th section title. And they are well on their way for a fourth consecutive state championship and an eighth state title overall. Phenomenal effort by St. Mary's in an off shooting night. Oh, absolutely. You said, and that's probably what had to. You know, 
you know, you see the the result here in the final score. You know, and what I'm impressed with is McNair. McNair has talent, and McNair had some some opportunities. But you know, as long as they're both in the same division, it's going to be tough for anybody to ever unseat uh, St. Mary's. St. Mary's always tough. St. Mary's, in fact, had moved up to this division just because they had dominated dominated the Division Three. Um, but excellent job by you know, good job there by McNair. Congratulations to St. Mary's. And listen to these numbers, Joey. 47 turnovers for McNair. McNair, when they got the ball into shooting position, did a heck of a job. 17 for 26 from the field. A phenomenal shooting percentage in defeat. But the 47 turnovers, the key there. For the Rams, they committed 16 turnovers of their own, but 23 for 73 from the field. Just 32% shooting. But, my goodness, 73 shots, Joey, that's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. That is a lot. And uh, they had those up, but it's still all those turnovers, extra opportunities, those long rebounds, and offensive rebounds. And so those gives gives a team extra opportunities. And that, to me, that's the, that and along with the turnovers is the difference of the game. Leading scorers tonight, Courtney Range with 25 for St. Mary's. Leading scorer tonight for McNair, Jasmine Sales, who hit those back-to-back -back NBA three-pointers, Finishes with 13. And, and so, final score from Power Balance Pavilion, St. Mary's 67, McNair 42. Continue to join us. We've got all-day coverage, the Division Four Section Boys Championship game coming up next between Modesto Christian and Rippon here on PlayOnSports.com. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run us to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just... <laughs> Holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20 yard line. What a game! And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send 